we're going to draw the orbital overlap diagram for carbon dioxide. Before we begin, let's draw the Lewis structure so we can figure out what the hybridization of each atom is. Surely you know or can draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. You have a carbon double bonded to each of two oxygens. Now the oxygens each have a single pi bond. There's a sigma bond between them, and then the second bond between the oxygen and the carbon is pi. That means there's one p orbital left over after the oxygen hybridizes. That means that the oxygen is sp2 hybridized. That's s with two of the p orbitals, but not the third. Same for this oxygen for the same reason. This carbon has two pi bonds, one, two, connected to it. That means it's going to hybridize the S and one of the P's, but leave two of the other P's unhybridized so that they can overlap to make a pi bond. Now, the tricky part about this orbital overlap diagram is that there are two leftover P orbitals for carbon. Let's start by drawing the SP hybridized orbitals. I'm going to put carbon in the center. SP hybridized orbitals are linearly arranged around the carbon. There you go. One, two SP hybridized orbitals. Now we need two unhybridized P orbitals. P orbitals look like peanuts or dumbbells, some teachers call them. I'm going to draw one of them up and down. That's going to be this red one. I'm going to label it, I don't know, 2PY. You can just label it 2P probably. And I'm going to do another one, and it's going to be coming out at you so that these are kind of octahedrally arranged, you know, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. I'm going to call that the 2PZ orbital. Now, again, these ones are coming out horizontally. These ones are vertical. The PZs are meant to be like coming out at you and going into the page in three dimensions, but this is the best we can do, right? Now we're gonna have to draw the oxygens and show where the overlap is actually happening. Now, I'm gonna put an oxygen atom here and it's sp2 hybridized. So one of the sp2 orbitals will come out horizontally and make a sigma bond with one of carbon's hybridized orbitals. Now, I need to pick one of these two, either the up-downs or the side-to-sides here, for this oxygen to actually have with it. I pick the, uh, pick the one going into and out of the page, and I need to make sure that those 2p orbitals, this is the unhybridized 2p orbital, is kind of oriented the same way. That I'm gonna call 2pz as well. This is a hybridized orbital. This is an unhybridized p orbital. I need to show the other hybridized orbitals, so I'm going to try to show one, because this is going into and out of the page, I need one that's like above and below the plane of the page, so that these three hybridized orbitals are at like about 120 degrees to each other but trying to maintain the perception that the unhybridized 2p orbital is coming out of the page at you. Now what's happening here is you have a sigma bond between carbon's sp hybridized orbital and oxygen's sp2 hybridized orbital. You have a lone pair here and a lone pair there. Those are both in sp2 hybridized orbitals. See those lone pairs there? And then you have a side-to-side -side overlap between carbon's unhybridized 2p orbital, well one of them, and oxygen's unhybridized 2p orbital. That is a pi bond because it's a side-to-side -side overlap between unhybridized orbitals. I'm going to write it down as pi carbon 2p, oxygen 2p. Those are just regular orbitals because they did not hybridize. And then, somewhat complicatedly, we're going to have to do the same for oxygen on the other side, except 
this oxygen, sure, you need the sigma bond, we get that. But this oxygen's unhybridized 2p orbital needs to match up with carbon's other one. So it needs to go above and below. That's also a 2p. I'm going to call it y to show that it's in the same direction. This here is the sigma bond between that carbon's sp hybridized orbital and oxygen's sp2, one of its sp2 hybridized orbitals. And then this side-by-side -side overlap will be the pi bond between carbon's 2py orbital and oxygen's leftover 2py orbital. This oxygen also has two other sp2 hybridized orbitals. One, two, we're trying to, again, show some three-dimensionality. These are 120 degrees from each other, except they're uh, oriented on this plane here that you're looking at into the page. And as always, well, I mean, because it's in the Lewis diagram, there's a lone pair here and a lone pair there as well. Very nice. This is what I call the orbital overlap diagram for carbon dioxide. Again, the major challenge is carbon has two pi bonds, one to each oxygen, and so you need a leftover 2p orbital for each oxygen, and they need to be shown separately. One pi bond in one direction, one in another. Maybe one's from the y's and one's from the z-axis. doesn't really matter if you choose x, y, or z here. I just chose what I chose because that's what I did. Nice. Hope that made sense. Thanks for being with me and best of luck.